Hi there, my name is Matti Sulanto and in this video I'm gonna tell you how you can save up to 20 or even 30-40% of disk space by converting your RAW files to Adobe DNG format. But before I continue, please consider subscribing to my channel and activate the bell so you'll get a notification every time I post a new video and I usually post on Tuesdays and on Fridays. And now let's get into those file conversions. I've been using Adobe's DNG file format on and off through the years. And I recently kind of rediscovered the file format and uh, because I think it's a good file format and it's a good idea, I thought I'd share this with you guys. But this is not sponsored by Adobe in any way. I recently converted my current Lightroom library that I started in January this year, 2019, to all DNG. But I really can't remember why I stopped using the DNG format at some point, but then again, it doesn't really matter right now. But are there some other reasons to use the DNG format instead of your camera's proprietary RAW format, other than saving some disk space? Well, Adobe claims that the DNG is more future-proof than any camera's proprietary RAW format because uh, the DNG is open source and it has wider support. Well, I'm not sure how much more future-proof it is than your camera's proprietary format, but I guess there's some truth in it. And it's supported outside of Adobe. There are many other software developers or manufacturers that support the DNG. Besides, there are some camera companies or camera manufacturers that use the DNG as their RAW format. For example, Leica and Ricoh Pentax. So I think the DNG is pretty safe format to use when it comes to compatibility in the future and in general. But for me, the main reason or the main benefit to use the DNG file format is to get some more space on my hard drive. My current library that I just converted used to be around 463 gigabytes. And after the conversion, it was 337 gigabytes. So I got about 126 gigabytes of kind of free space on my hard drive. And it's not that the 126 gigabytes would be a really expensive piece of storage space. Um, but uh, think about it this way, I can fit several thousands of uh, RAW files from my Lumix G9 into that space, for example. And also, we buy new stuff all the time, just because it was so cheap. And we buy new stuff all the time because we got some freebies on the side. So I think it makes perfect sense to try to squeeze a bit more out of something that I already paid for. In this case, a hard drive. In my case, I can store about 20-23% more RAW files on that same hard drive now that I'm using the DNG format. I have a friend, a professional photographer, who uses a Sony camera and he says the DNG file is roughly 30% smaller than the Sony's own RAW file. So it depends on your camera how much your savings are. And the smaller file size is because of better encoding, says Adobe. But whatever is the real reason, nothing is lost in translation. And if you convert pictures that you already processed, all the settings and adjustments you made are saved and preserved. And now let's check out how you can convert your existing RAW files to DNG. You can do the conversion either in Lightroom or in Adobe Camera Raw, but you can also use Adobe's 
free standalone application called DNG Converter. I'm just gonna show you how it works in Lightroom, but it's very similar process in uh, Adobe Camera Raw or in DNG Converter. There are a couple of ways you can do it in Lightroom, the conversion. You can do it when you import your pictures. At the top of the import window, there's an option that says copy as DNG. But I usually don't do it like this because the import takes quite a bit longer if the conversion happens at the same time. And I'm usually anxious to see my pictures right away in the big, on the big screen. And the other reason is that when I see my pictures on the big screen, I can right away delete some pictures that I definitely don't um, intend to keep. Some that are mistakes or some for some other reason I think um, I don't need those uh, files. And the other option is to convert the files that you already have in your library. And by the way, the conversion is quite power hungry operation and uh, it can take a while, especially if you have hundreds or thousands of pictures that you are converting. So I think it's a good idea to make the conversion when you are not necessarily using your computer for anything else or at least for nothing uh, really heavy at the same time. And to make the conversion, you simply choose the files or the photos you'd like to convert in the library view in Lightroom and then go to the library menu and select convert photo to DNG. And then you're gonna see some options. The default options are just about right, at least in my opinion, but I'm gonna go through them anyway so you know what they mean. The first option is only convert raw files. That makes sense. You don't wanna convert your JPEGs because that doesn't make any sense. The second option, delete originals after successful conversion. I think it makes sense if you wanna save some disk space. Of course, if you for some reason would like to save your original RAW files, the proprietary camera RAW files, then you will not check that box. And the next one is the exten file extension. That's nothing uh, really special. And the next one says compatibility. There you can choose how far back you'd like your DNG files to be compatible with uh, uh, some old versions of Adobe Camera Raw. I hope I said it correctly, but I think you understand what I mean. And the next one is JPEG preview size. That's quite obvious. You choose what kind of uh, preview size you'd like to be embedded with the DNG file. And then there's an option to choose lossy compression, but I don't think it makes any sense because it's lossy compression. And then there's also a choice to embed the original raw file. But that uh, pretty much doubles the file size. And um, uh, in my opinion, it doesn't make any sense. So that's how it works in Lightroom. And like I said, it's pretty similar process also in Adobe's free DNG converter and also in Adobe Camera Raw if you're using Photoshop. But there's gotta be a downside too. At least one, nothing can be 100% uh, good or positive. Okay, there are two downsides that I can think of. The first one is that if you're using your camera manufacturer's own raw developer, that probably does not recognize the DNG file format. So, um, in that case, it makes sense not to convert any of your files. And the second one is that if you're using um, more than one camera brand, say you're using Panasonic and Olympus, for example, then after the conversion, you can't tell the camera anymore just by looking at the file extension because everything is DNG. But I would recommend you to use uh, customized file names in your camera anyway, because most cameras have that feature. So in my opinion, there's nothing much to lose if you convert your photos to DNG file format. There's only something to gain. But I'd be interested to know if you guys are already using the DNG format and what kind of experiences you have with it. Please leave me a comment down below.
And here are a couple of videos I chose for you. Please check them out if you don't have anything better to do. And after you watch them, please go out and create some more great photos. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.